So we're going to talk about Zenko, our multi-cloud uh, data controller. So this new product we released a few weeks ago. Um, so it builds on top of the SKT S3 server that we are renaming the cloud server. So you will see that the name will be cloud server from now on. I tried pushing. Uh, like so we open sourced it right after Cloud Field Day last year, maybe Tech Field Days actually. Uh, and uh, the number of downloads, uh, which are Docker poor, increased exponentially. Right? And so very happy about being past 700,000 uh, right now. And we, we build on top of that uh, with Zenko. So Zenko uses uh, S3 server as one of its <coughs> engines. So what people say about uh, this uh, cloud server, uh, it's been used a lot for continuous integration platform, continuous integration test, uh, meaning that if you want to start a very quickly an S3 service so that you can test your own app on top of it, uh, it's a very good solution because it's a single container. There's nothing to configure. You just start it, uh, store in memory, which is one of the drivers that it supports, do your test and kill the instance. So that's something that people have been using. We've also seen uh, use cases where, for example, this one, um, with uh, Blue Solutions, which is about just having a small object store. So there are people who want an object store with an S3 API that's uh, less than 100 terabytes, for example. And it makes sense to use S3 server because it's self-contained, it's very small, it's lightweight, uh, so you can use the S3 API as you would use it on Amazon, except the data is local. Uh, a lot of application developers as well, so uh, when we certify ISVs today, we just send them a link to the S3 server, uh, con container, and we can just download it, test the API. If it works with uh, this, it's going to work with Skeletty full solution because it's the exact same API we use in both cases. Uh, so why Zenko? Uh, a lot of our customers, it's been for the last few years and uh, increasing in the last six months, uh, want control and freedom of their data. And they actually understand that <coughs> they don't want to depend on one cloud service provider. Uh, we see that Amazon is the biggest uh, of, of them all, uh, but customers are scared about having all the data in one basket. Uh, it's not so much for the uh, existing data, it's more for the coming data, because you know that over time you're going to need much more. So if you have a petabyte today, you're going to need a two petabyte next year, four petabytes the year after, uh, you won't have choice of where you want to put it. In. And there's a, a lot of compatibility issues. So we decided to launch Zenko and we focus on four pillars of Zenko. One is a single interface to the cloud. So it's the S3 API. Okay. So whether you store the data locally on, on your drives, on a NAS, or you store the data on uh, Azure or Google Cloud, you still want to use the S3 API because it's the de facto standard. Uh, if you look in the, in any, uh, if you look for ISVs that support the object protocol, they will all support the S3 protocol. Uh, if you look at backup application that you want to point to a cloud, S3 protocol will be there. Uh, the other ones uh, I'll, you see less often. So we wanted to give a unified S3 uh, API access to many different backends. Um, we also focused on keeping the data intact in the cloud. So to give you an example, if you back up your data, I'm not going to name uh, companies, but with uh, standard backup tools, what you see in the cloud is unusable. You see a bunch of fixed size blocks, for example, one meg, and you see millions of them in a folder with uh, hashes for names, so four, six, seven, something, which has nothing to do with what you actually stored, right? And so that means that in the cloud, you cannot use the cloud for compute. You cannot uh, use the cloud to uh, do some kind of CDN, to process the data, because it's not in a readable <laughs> format. With Zenko, we keep the data readable in the cloud. Um, also, you, you want to be able to search and find your data. When you have petabytes of data, it's everywhere. It's like a Gmail. You need a search feature to locate your data. You're not using folders anymore. And so Zenko focuses on the ability to search on metadata and locate your data wherever it is. Uh, and data has a lifetime, and you may want to uh, apply some processing over time. And that's what we call data workflows. And uh, Raul did a demo of Bagbit. Uh, Bagbit is the engine for that, which is what about if you want to delete all data? What about if you want to compress data differently in the future? Uh, what about if you want to encrypt it with a different keys? So Bagbit allows you to apply processing 
on data that's already stored in the system. Um, so some use case for, for multi-cloud. Uh, so this is coming from our customer base, so the Skeletty customer base, uh, large enterprises. Uh, one obvious one is content distribution. So the cloud providers have their own CDN, uh, for example, Amazon CloudFront. And so you don't want to put all your data in the cloud. You may want to put only the video files, for example, uh, that are popular in the cloud so that you can use their CDN. So that's one use case. Uh, to be able to do that, you need search because you want to locate only the files that you want to push, push only these ones uh, in the cloud, and then delete them when they're not uh, needed anymore. Uh, compute bursting, so all kind of workloads uh, in, in the banking industry, it's about crushing, doing some number crushing on uh, uh, stock data. Uh, you actually need a lot of compute power, and you don't want to have it in-house. And the data sets are not that big. So can you move the data set in the cloud, do your compute on hundreds and thousands of virtual instances, and when you're done, just kill the instances uh, and uh, get the result back in your own data center. Some other use case is uh, an analytics. It's kind of a, an obvious one, especially in, in the context of IoT. You have a lot of recalls. You want to do some computation. You're not an expert of uh, Hadoop uh, or Spark, so you want to use one of the cloud service that has its own Hadoop on demand or Spark on demand, start instances on uh, 10,000 servers, do your calculation, do whatever you need, and then kill the infrastructure. Uh, the other use case is long-term archival, uh, cold storage. Uh, so services like Glacier and others from uh, Microsoft or Google are going to give you very cheap long-term store as long as you don't access your data. Uh, so if you can do a metadata search that locates all the stale files that have not been accessed in the last two years, then these are the ones that you should send into the cloud, which is much more than just directory listing or listing of buckets. It's actually looking at the access patterns and moving data that's old. So all of this is, track, is tracked by uh, Zenco metadata, and we can use um, Backbit to, to move this into the cloud. The, I mean, these use cases do look really well, and I think it's really nicely written at a, a very understandable use cases. But yes. do you see... Do you see companies moving that amount of data around? Um, obviously, there's bandwidth costs with Amazon and other kind of clouds, and data has an issue that it's that it's a lot to copy. And even you know, copying a you know a how many gigs yeah. or terabytes of data to do analytics overnight, are people actually doing that, or is that just a, a nice idea? Yeah, so actually, it's a much more. Um but much more weird than uh, we even thought about. Because, because <coughs> this, each of the use cases is not all your data. You see? It's not about moving all your data. It's always a subset of the data. Yeah. Right? And in all these use cases, you don't actually retrieve a lot of content. Because what's expensive in the cloud is when you get the data back, because you pay for waiting. If you see how most of the use cases here, you actually don't have a lot to read back. So this one has nothing to read back. because It is just a CDN. And when you do the compute, the result of the compute is not that big. Uh, same thing for analytics and long-term storage is the data that mm -hmm. you don't access. So that kind of makes sense when you look at it this way. Mm -hmm. um, so cloud server, uh, we talked about that. I'm not going to spend too much time. It's our SP API that's open source. Uh, let's move on. Vanity cloud data location control. So I think we, we talked about that. So Zenco has a support for multiple backends for storage. Uh, we've uh, built our own. For example, Skate Ring is a backend. Uh, and we've built backend for S3. We're building a backend for Azure. We'll do others. And over time, we see an ecosystem of backends uh, being written. And all of them need to make sure that the data is intact when it's stored in a different backend. And you can still read the data. Um, so, so, so are you sorry. providing? Mm, sorry, go. So are you saying that you're using the S3 API, but under the covers, you're translating it to Azure? Absolutely, and yeah. Okay, and that's just because that's the language you That's chose. the language. Uh, yeah, okay. Somebody tweeted uh, S3 is the Ethernet of uh, object storage. I think yeah. that's one way to look at it, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. So is that a nice use case that people are very happy to see as you're having an S3 interface? Because that is... That's sort of my question. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I see if you were already S3 literate, then yeah. I'd hate to learn, I'd hate to, hate to tell my teams to learn S3, <coughs> even if it is the de facto standard or the Esperanto of storage. Yeah. Is that, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I get so, that. Yeah. So, but a lot of like, so a lot of my customers are Azure customers. Mm -hmm. Are they gonna wanna commit to learning? Just, it's just a new language, so I get that. If you look at the, 
as a developer, right? And yeah. you want to decide which API am I going to learn? You want to learn yeah. the one that has the most benefit to you in the marketplace, right? Perhaps, and so you would yeah. fear that you're going to use the S3 interface because yeah. you guarantee the job <laughs> if, you, if yeah. you know how to use the S3 interface. So we, can, yeah. we see that as a, as a rolling kind of thing. Yeah, I get it. And more and more people are asking for it. So, so sometimes we go to customers and we do a training on, it, on the Amazon protocol. Yeah. Because we well, just want to. Nobody uses the portal. We use PowerShell, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. OK. <laughs> um, so I want to talk about metadata search. Uh, we have another section where we do a demo, so we talk much more. But that's key in this. Uh, when you look at Amazon itself, the search capabilities are very, very low. Right? Uh, if, you, if you have uh, millions of objects in Amazon, it's hard to locate anything. Uh, what you can do is uh, do some uh, listing and prefix search in name of files. We're actually looking at metadata and uh, uh, tags and date of creation and last access. These kind of things are missing. So we wanted to build that as part of Zenko because a lot of customers are asking for it. So we call it Cluzo. It's, it's going to be an open source project uh, which is federated search on metadata, whatever backend of Zenko you've been using. Right? So this will allow you to uh, use an SQL interface or REST API uh, and search it to any metadata header you put into the object, but also any of our own system metadata like creation time, uh, who owns it, uh, these kind of things. So next slide. Um, so the way that we're looking at this is that we want to build an ecosystem of uh, extensions. Uh, and have multiple companies and developers develop extensions for Zenko. That's actually why we made it open source, to make it easy for people to uh, extend it. Uh, some extensions will be extra data storage backend. So since we launched Zenko, we had a lot of demand from uh, other cloud service providers who say, I want to build my own Zenko backend. So that is not just S3, Azure, and Google Cloud, and, and another backend. Uh, also, Traditional uh, NAS. Uh, we, we've seen demand from customer this time. We say, okay, that's great. I'm going to deploy uh, SKT Ring. I'm going to deploy Zenko. And I want to support this existing file that I have as a backend because I want to reuse that capacity. Um, so these are one type of extensions. Then uh, search plugins. Uh, there's in Europe, I don't know if you heard of GDPR, but there's a lot of uh, uh, demand from the state and the government so that you. Uh, don't keep uh, customer data for too long and you have to obey to some rules. Uh, what's hard with GDPR is it means you have to search into your data and make sure you are compliant because if you're not, you're going to pay penalties. Uh, so there are companies that are uh, dedicated to uh, helping people solve a GDPR problem. Uh, we're talking to one of them that will do an extension to uh, Cluzo so that it do searches that make sense for uh, this law. Uh, analytics of data, uh, that makes sense, and uh, discovery for legal document, uh, that makes sense as well. So that's part of the uh, things we see as plugins. And uh, Backbit, so Raul demonstrated how to copy data to a cloud, uh, uh, but Backbit can do anything to your data. So we're looking at compliance, so calculating checksum, making sure the data hasn't been tampered with, so it's kind of a warm uh, ECC compliance plugins, uh, migration to a different type of cloud, uh, deleting all data. There's a an ecosystem there. And part of the hackathon we're doing pretty soon uh, it will be about creating uh, plugins. And one of them, uh, I found that funny, is an FTP backend. <laughs> so that Zenko <laughs> can store data via old uh, FTP. Cool. <laughs> Does Zenko then do a search on that NAS file, for example, to create metadata for the files? Or yeah. Uh, so if the data was uh, stored through Zenko, Zenko will keep track of the metadata. And that's how you can do a search. Okay, so but it, I thought you were talking about existing data on a NAS file, for example. Yeah. Um, so we need a way to load uh, the listing of data, not the data itself. <coughs> you want to stay, want to keep it where it is, uh, but okay. load the listing initially, so that. Uh, okay, so that's problem. just for the search functionality. It's not actually for an S3 gateway. Yeah, it's for the search functionality. Okay, right. Uh, so release plan. We announced uh, Zenko Open Source Community Edition on July 11. Uh, uh, it's available on GitHub. There's a few Docker containers that come with it. It can be deployed in HA, a solution. And the backends that we support today are local volumes and the uh, S3 itself. So AWS itself as one of the backends. Uh, in September, we're going to release the metadata search, uh, Backbit integrated with Zenko, and, uh, and uh, Azure 
uh, integration maybe before that actually and uh, end of this year uh, we'll have an enterprise edition uh, that is scale out so it can handle more traffic that's where we cut the line we don't cut the line on features the line, we cut the line on uh, the amount of traffic that you can support uh, which has also file uh, compatibility so you can mount Zenco via NFS and SMB uh, and support the ring as, a, as one of the backends. Uh, so the way that we uh, envision people using Zenco uh, is to actually use a SaaS portal for configuration. Uh, the feedback we got from S3 server is great for developers, but as a user, I want something simpler with a UI. So this, I'm going to give you a preview of the UI. It's not out yet, uh, but uh, so you're the first one to see it. Uh, and uh, it's going to be released in a couple of weeks, uh, but I, I'm going to show a demo. And uh, Rashad, you want to show the install before I show the portal? <coughs> so is this just for the demo that Zenko is SaaS based, or is it actually a SaaS based? No, no. Um, the SaaS is just a configuration portal, <coughs> optional. But Zenko itself is standalone. You do not need to. Uh, we don't host it. So just to add to that, uh, we got some feedback that it would make sense to run Zenko in the cloud. Uh, and so that's interesting, uh, as a VM somewhere, uh, so that you don't have to run it locally. And it could move data between clouds, even if it's not physically in your data center. So we're looking at that. But it's not scality hosted. It's always going to be the customer, its own instance. 